Blessings, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus of Nazareth is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that he alone is Lord. Hallelujah. Well, friends, we are continuing our study on the road to Calvary, and today we find ourselves in part six, the dove and the lamb. Victorious living and effective soul winning are not the product of our better selves and hard endeavors. They are simply the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We are not called upon to produce the fruit simply to bear it. It is all the time to be his fruit. Nothing is important then than that we should be continuously filled with the Holy Spirit. How this may be so for us is graphically illustrated by the record in the first chapter of John of how the Holy Spirit came upon the Lord Jesus at his baptism. John the Baptist had seen Jesus coming to him and had said of him, Behold, the Lamb of God that bears the sins of the world. Then as he baptized him, he saw the heavens opened and the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. What a suggestive picture we have here, the dove descending upon the lamb and resting himself upon the Messiah. The lamb and the dove are surely the gentlest of all God's creatures. The lamb speaks of meekness and submissiveness, and the dove speaks of peace. Surely this shows us that the heart of deity is humility, quietness, gentleness, tenderness, When the eternal God chose to reveal himself in his son, he gave him the name of the Lamb. And when it was necessary for the Holy Spirit to come into the world, he was revealed under the emblem of the dove. Is it not obvious then that the reason why we have to be humble in order to walk with God is not merely because God is so big and we so little that humility befits such little creatures, but because God himself is so humble. The main lesson of this incident is that the Holy Spirit, as the dove, could only come upon and remain upon the Lord Jesus because he was the lamb. Had the Lord Jesus had any other disposition than that of the lamb, humility, submissiveness, and self-surrender, the dove could never have rested on him. Being himself so gentle, the dove that is, He would have been frightened away had not Jesus been meek and lowly in heart. Here then, we have pictured for us the condition upon which the same Holy Spirit can come upon us and abide upon us. The dove can only abide upon us as we are willing to be as the lamb. How impossible that he should rest upon us while self is unbroken. The manifestations of the unbroken self are the direct opposite of the gentleness of the dove. Read again in Galatians chapter 5, the ninefold fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, and self-control, with which the dove longs to fill us. Then contrast those characteristics with the ugly works of the flesh, which is the New Testament's name for the unbroken self in the very same chapter. It is the contrast of the snarling wolf with the gentle dove. How clear then that the Holy Spirit will only come upon us and remain upon us as we are willing to be as the lamb on each point which he will convict us. And nothing is so searching and humbling as to look at the lamb on his way to Calvary for us and to be shown in how many points we have been unwilling to take that same position of the Lamb for him. Look at him for a moment as the Lamb. He was the simple Lamb. A Lamb is the simplest of all God's creatures. It has no schemes or plans for helping itself. It exists in helplessness and simplicity. Jesus made himself as nothing for us, and became the simple lamb. He had no strength of his own 
or wisdom of his own. No schemes to get himself out of difficulties, just simple dependence on the Father of all time. The Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father do. Isn't that what Jesus said? But we, how complicated we are. What schemes we have had of helping ourselves and of getting ourselves out of difficulties. What efforts of our own we have resorted to to live the Christian life and to do God's works as if we were something and could do something. The dove had to take his flight at least as far as the conscious blessing of his presence was concerned, because we were not willing to be simple lambs. Then we see Jesus as the shorn lamb, willing to be shorn of his rights, his reputation, and every human liberty that was due to him, just as a lamb is shorn of its wool. He never resisted. A lamb never does. When he was reviled for our sakes, he did not revile again. When he suffered, he threatened not. He never said, you cannot treat me like that. Don't you know that I am the son of God? But we, oh we, on how many occasions have we been unwilling to be shorn of that which was our right? We were not willing for his sake to lose what was our own. We insisted that we should be treated with respect due to our position. We resisted and we fought. The dove had to take his flight from us, for we were not willing to be shorn lambs. And we were left without peace, we were left hard, and we were left unloving. Then further, Jesus was the silent lamb. As a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Facing the accusations and ridicule of men, we read he answered nothing. He never defended himself, not once, nor did he explain himself. But we have been anything but silent when others have said unkind or untrue things about us. Our voices have been loud in self-defense and self-vindication, and there has been anger in our voices. We have excused ourselves when we should have admitted frankly our wrong. On every such occasion, the dove had to take his flight and withdraw his peace and blessing from our hearts because we were not willing to be the silent lamb. Jesus was also the spotless lamb. Not only did nothing escape his lips, but there was nothing in his heart but love for those who had sent him to the cross. There was no resentment towards them, no grudges, no bitterness. Even as they were putting the nails through his hands, he was murmuring, I forgive you. And he asked his father to forgive them too. He was willing to suffer it in meekness for us. But what resentment and bitterness have not we had in our hearts toward this one and that one and over so much less than what they did to Jesus? Each reaction left a stain on our hearts and the dove had to fly away because we were not willing to bear it and forgive it for Jesus' sake. These then are the acts and attitudes which drive the Holy Spirit from our lives. As far as present blessing is concerned, they are all sin and how guilty we are. Sin is the only thing that hinders the revival of his people. The question of all questions for us just now is how can the dove return to our lives with his peace and power? And the answer again is just simply the Lamb of God, for he is not only the simple lamb and the shorn lamb and the silent lamb and the spotless lamb, but above everything else, he is the substitute lamb. To the Jew, the lamb that was offered to God was always a substitute lamb. Its meekness and submissiveness was only incidental to its main work, that of being slain for his sin and of its blood being sprinkled on the altar to atone for it. The humility of the Lord Jesus is becoming our lamb was necessary only that he might become on the cross our substitute, our scapegoat, carrying our sins in his own body on the tree, so that there might be forgiveness for our sins and cleansing from all their ugly stains when we repent of them. But inasmuch as there is no past or future with God, but all is present 
and timeless, there is a sense in which the suffering of the Lord Jesus for the sins of which we have not repented is present also. What a vision it is when we see these sins wounding and hurting him right now. May this solemn thought break our proud hearts in repentance. For it is only when we have seen these sins of ours in the heart of Jesus, so that we are broken and willing to repent of them and put them right, that the blood of the Lamb cleanses us from them, and the dove returns with peace and blessings to our hearts. Listen to the words of this poem. He humbled himself to the manger, and even to Calvary's tree. But I am so proud and unwilling his humble disciple to be. He yielded his will to the Father and chose to abide in the light. But I prefer wrestling to resting and try by myself to do right. Lord, break me, then cleanse me and fill me and keep me abiding in thee that fellowship may be unbroken and thy name be hallowed in me. A saintly African Christian told a congregation once that as he was climbing the hill to the meeting, he heard steps behind him. He turned and saw a man carrying a very heavy load up the hill on his back. He was full of sympathy for him and spoke to him. Then he noticed that his hands were scarred, and he realized that it was Jesus. He said to him, Lord, are you carrying the world's sins up the hill? No, said the Lord Jesus not the world's sins, just yours. As that African simply told the vision God had just given him, the people's hearts and his heart were broken as they saw their sins at the cross. Our hearts need to be broken too, friends, and only when they are shall we be willing for the confessions, the apologies, the reconciliations, and the restitutions that are involved in a true repentance of sin. Then, When we have been willing to humble ourselves as the Lord humbled himself, the dove will return to us. One last word before we close. The dove is the emblem of peace, which suggests that if the blood of Jesus has cleansed us and we are walking with the lamb in humility, the sign of the Spirit's presence and fullness will be peace. This is indeed to be the test of our walk all the way along. Let the peace of God rule or arbitrate in your hearts. That's what we're told in Colossians 3.15. If the dove ceases to sing in your hearts at any time, if your peace is broken, then it can only be because of sin. In some matter, you have departed from the humility of the Lamb. We must ask God to show us what it is and be quick to repent of it and bring the sin back to the cross. Then the dove will be once again in his rightful place in our hearts, and the peace of God will be ours. In this, we shall know the continuous abiding of the Spirit's presence, which is open even to fallen men through the immediate and constant application of the precious blood of Jesus. Shall we not begin from today to allow our lives to be ruled by the heavenly dove, the peace of God, and allow him to be the arbiter all the day through? We shall find ourselves walking in a path of constant conviction and much humbling, but in this way, we shall come into real conformity with the Lamb of God, and we shall know the only victory that is worth anything, and that, my friends, is the conquest of self. I pray the Lord will continue to open your eyes, touch your heart, and change your life. Now, I love you, friends, as Yahweh wills, and until next time, may you walk in the Spirit. And I'll see you on the next video.